this is the fifth time that I am filming this tutorial because I keep having technical difficulties. I'm going a little crazy. Uh, hopefully this one works. Today I'm going to share with you how to play successfully in a small chamber group. I'm assuming that many of you watching are probably in junior high school, high school, maybe your first year of college, you've never done this before, and you want to know what to expect. Tip number one, communicate well with each other. If you want a cohesive end product, you have to communicate your personal interpretations with each other. There are often times in music where you can play it in a different way. So there are lots of different opinions. You have to listen to the opinions of others, but you also have to be bold enough to share your own opinion, not in a forceful, rude way. Just share how you think it should sound, listen to how other people uh, think it should sound, and then agree on one specific thing. Don't just toss around ideas and then never actually arrive at one single solution. Pick one, write it down, practice it over and over again until you all sound uh, unified. Tip number two, throughout this process, be very respectful to each other. Actually listen, don't just pretend like you're listening and then do your own thing, listen to each other. Other ways that you can be respectful, you show up to rehearsal on time, you don't cancel last minute, and you also want to prepare beforehand. If you're not prepared and you show up to rehearsal, everyone else knows their material except for you, you're going to slow the entire rest of the group down because you just don't know your music. Tip number three, look at each other while you are playing. This not only is so much more fun for you as a group, but it's also more fun for the audience watching you. You look more like a team, you're having fun, there's a lot more energy. Watch the other players, have them look at you, even have designated places in the music where you mark in, look at the violinist here, and you'll find that it really, really helps create a very unified final product. Tip number four, move and breathe. Same things that I just talked about. If you move and if you breathe, you're gonna be more together. It's gonna be more fun and it's going to be much more entertaining for the audience. Number five, also very similar, cue your entrances. Cue yourself, even if no one else is coming in with you, if you make a big entrance, not dynamically, but a visually large entrance, that's going to help the other players know what's going on. And then whenever you all come in together, cue all together and cue in the same way. If the violinist is cueing rather slowly and the violist is cueing, you know, at the right tempo, you know this is not going to be good because obviously these two people have definitely different tempos in mind. But if you see them cue together in the same way, you know that everything is going to go smoothly. So practice cueing together. If you have some entrances with someone else, or just the group as a whole, practice coming in together and making sure that it's in the same style. If you're gonna start on the string, if you're coming from um, above the string, decide on these very small specific details. Tip number six, bring the score. This will help you show which instruments come in together. If during the first rehearsal you're having trouble keeping with a group, if you don't really know where you are, maybe you're getting lost, look at the score, see who you're with. What the score will also help with, and this is my next point, um, tip number seven. So if someone has the melody, back off, let them have their time to shine, and it will make the performance a lot more interesting because if you all are playing at the exact same volume the entire way through, think of how boring that is. Really, really boring. Tip number eight, match your articulations. Bowing articulation is often very challenging to match, but when you do, it gives a, a much better sound to the performance. So if the violist is doing something a little bit shorter and the violinist is doing something a little bit longer, maybe someone is playing actually off the string, have a conversation, decide which one you wanna go with, write it down, practice it, make sure it's together, film if you have to, record yourselves playing together to see if it's actually sounding the way that you think it's gonna sound, and that should definitely help. Number nine, get as many coachings as possible. I don't know in your particular situation if you have a coach, but if you do, take advantage of that. If you don't have one, maybe find one and have them be that outside perspective that can point out the things that you've been missing. Whenever you're playing in a group together, it's really easy to get just focused in on your part and you forget to listen to the people around you. That is an amateur mistake and as your group matures and gets better, you won't experience that as much. You'll be able to really keep track of both and know what the overall sound is. But even then, it always helps to have someone else come in and pick out the little details for you. 
Tip number 10, you can also have your coach check for balance. If you don't have a coach, find some musician with a good ear who can tell you if the balance is just off between the instruments. I, in my chamber music experiences, have not been the best at this. We usually wait until the last week to really check for balance. And we would usually wait until we were in the venue that we were going to be performing at. This is not the best idea. You want to be checking for balance all along, but, but it does change whenever you change rooms. The balance definitely changes according to what venue you're in. Also, along the same line, keep in mind that if you're playing with a piano, so if it's a piano trio, they're not going to be carting along their own piano. Some professionals do. I've heard of that, but most people don't. So you're going to be dealing with a whole new piano and pianos have different dynamic levels sometimes. So you're also going to have to take that in consideration. Check, check the piano for balance. It usually just overpowers everything. I prefer to have the lid all the way down. Doesn't always have to be like that, but just something to keep in mind. I actually have a bonus tip for you today. Practice with the metronome. You practice with it in your own individual time. So do the same thing whenever you're with a group. You don't have to play through the entire song with a metronome. If you want to go for it, but just take those parts where you're slowing down or you're just not together, put the metronome on it and it should be fixed very quickly. As always, love what you do, practice well, share it with others. I hope this video helped. I hope this video works. Please let this video work. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for next week's video.